Thirty-third book of Moses, Caphled Leviticus. And the Lord called Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of witness, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whosoever of you shall bring a gift unto the Lord shall bring it of the cattle, even of the oxen and of the sheep. If he bring a burnt offering of the oxen, he shall offer a male without blemish, and shall bring him to the door of the tabernacle of witness, that he may be accepted before the Lord. And let him put his hand upon the head of the burnt sacrifice, and favor shall be given him to make an atonement for him, and let him kill the ox before the Lord. And let the priests Aaron's sons bring the blood, and let them sprinkle it round about upon the altar that is before the door of the tabernacle of witness. And let the burnt offerings be stripped and hewed in pieces. And then let the sons of Aaron the priest put fire upon the altar, and put wood upon the fire. And let them lay the pieces with the head and the fat upon the wood that is on the fire in the altar. But the inwards and the legs they shall wash in water, and the priest shall burn altogether upon the altar, that it be a burnt sacrifice and an offering of a sweet odour unto the Lord. If he will offer a burnt sacrifice of the sheep, whether it be of the lambs or of the goats, he shall offer a male without blemish, and let him kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord, and let the priest's Aaron's sons sprinkle the blood of it round about upon the altar, and let it be cut in pieces, even with his head and his fat, and let the priest put them upon the wood that lieth upon the fire in the altar. But let him wash the inwards and the legs with water, and then bring all together and burn it upon the altar. That is a burnt offering and a sacrifice of sweet savour unto the Lord. If he will offer a burnt offering of the fowl, she shall offer either of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar, and wring the neck asunder of it and burn it on the altar, and let the blood run out upon the sides of the altar, the other, to the Lord, and pluck away his crop and his feathers, and cast them beside the altar on the east part upon the heap of ashes, and break his wings, but pluck them not asunder. And then let the priest burn it upon the altar, even upon the wood that lieth upon the fire, a burnt sacrifice and an offering of a sweet savour unto the Lord. If any soul will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his of fairing shall be fine flour, and he shall pour thereto oil, and put frankincense thereon, and shall bring it unto Aaron's sons the priests and one of them shall take there out his handful of the flour, and of the oil with all the frankincense, and burn it for a memorial upon the altar, an offering of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons, as a thing most holy of the sacrifices of the Lord. If any man bring a meat offering that is bacon in the oven, let him bring sweet cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. If thy meat of fairing be bacon in the frying pan, then it shall be of sweet flour mingled with oil. And thou shalt mince it small, and pour oil thereon, and so is it a meat offering. If thy meat offering be a thing broiled upon the gridiron of flour mingled with oil it shall be. And thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord, and shalt deliver it unto the priest, and he shall bring it unto the altar, and shall heave up part of the meat offering for a memorial, and shall burn it upon the altar, an offering of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons, as a thing that is most holy of the offerings of the Lord. All the meat offerings which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made without leaven. For ye shall neither burn leaven nor honey in any offering of the Lord. Notwithstanding ye shall bring the firstlings of them unto the Lord. But they shall not come upon the altar to make a sweet savour. All thy meat offerings thou shalt salt with salt neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. But upon all thine offerings thou shalt bring salt. If thou offer a meat offering of the first ripe fruits unto the Lord, then take of that which is yet green, and dry it by the fire, and beat it small. And so offer the meat offering of thy first ripe fruits. And then pour oil thereto, and put frank incense thereon, and so it is a meat offering." And the priest shall burn part of the beaten corn and part of that oil with all the frankincense for a remembrance. That is an offering unto the Lord. If any man bring a peace offering of the oxen, whether it be male or female, he shall bring such as is without blemish. Be for the Lord, and let him put his hand upon the head of his offering, and kill it before the door of the tabernacle of witness. And Aaron's sons the priests shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about, and they shall offer of the peace offering to be a sacrifice unto the Lord the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys with the fat that lieth upon the loins, and the caul that is on the liver, they shall take away with the kidneys. 
and Aaron's sons shall burn them upon the altar with the burnt sacrifice which is upon the wood on the fire. That is a sacrifice of a sweet favor unto the Lord. If a man bring a peace offering unto the Lord from of the flock, whether it be male or female, it shall be without blemish. If he offer a lamb, he shall bring it before the Lord and put his hand upon his offering's head, and kill it in the door of the tabernacle of witness, and Aaron's sons shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about the altar. And of the peace offering they shall bring a sacrifice unto the Lord, the fat thereof and the rump altogether which they shall take off hard by the backbone, and the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys with the fat that lieth upon them and upon the loins, and the caul that is upon the liver he shall take away with the kidneys, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar to feed the Lord's offering withal. If the offering be a goat, he shall bring it before the Lord and put his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of witness, and the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall bring thereof his offering unto the Lord's sacrifice, the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys, and the fat that lieth upon them and upon the loins, and the caul that is upon the liver he shall take away with the kidneys." and the priest shall burn them upon the altar to feed the Lord's sack riffis withal and to make a sweet savour. And thus shall all. The fat be the Lord's, and it shall be a law forever among your generations after you in your dwelling places, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, When a soul sinneth thorough ignorance, and hath done any of those things which the Lord hath forbidden in his commandments to be done, if the priest that is anointed sin and make the people to do amiss, he shall bring for his sin which he hath done, an ox without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the ox unto the door of the tabernacle of witness before the Lord, and shall put his hand upon the ox's head, and kill him before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the ox's blood, and bring it into the tabernacle of witness, and shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle thereof seven times before the Lord even before the hanging of the holy place. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet scents before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of witness, and shall pour all the blood of the ox upon the bottom of the altar of burnt offerings, which is by the door of the tabernacle of witness. And he shall take away all the fat of the ox that is the sin offering, the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is about them, and the two kidneys with the fat that lieth upon them and upon the loins, and the call upon the liver let them take away also with the kidneys, as it was taken from the ox of the peace offering, and let the priest burn them upon the altar of burnt offerings. But the skin of the ox and all his flesh with his head, his legs, his inwards with his dung, shall he carry altogether out of the host unto a clean place, even where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on wood with fire, even upon the heap of ashes. If the whole commonalty of the children of Israel sin thorough ignorance, and the thing be hid from their eyes, so that they have committed any of these things which the Lord hath forbidden to be done in his commandments, and have offended, and the sin which they have sinned be afterward known, then shall they offer an ox for a sin offering, and shall bring him before the tabor, nacal of witness, and the elders of the multitude shall put their hands upon his head before the Lord, and the priest that is anointed shall bring of his blood into the tabernacle of witness and shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil, and shall put of the blood upon the horns of the altar which is before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness, and shall pour all the blood upon the bottom of the altar of burnt offerings which is by the door of the tabernacle of witness, and shall take all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar, and shall do with his ox as he did with the sin offering ox, and the priest shall make an atonement for them, and so it shall be forgiven them and he shall bring the ox without the host and burn him as he burned the first, so is this the sin offering of the common alti. When a lord sinneth and committeth thorough ignorance any of these things which the Lord his God hath forbidden to be done in his commandments and hath so offended, when his sin is showed unto him which he hath sinned, he shall bring for his offering an hay goat without blemish, and lay his hand upon the head of it, and kill it in the place where the burnt offerings are killed before the Lord. This is a sin offering." Then let the priest take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the burnt offering altar, and pour his blood upon the bottom of the burnt offering altar, and burn all his fat upon the altar, as he doth the fat of the peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and so it shall be forgiven him. 
If one of the common people of the land sin thorough ignorance and commit any of the things which the Lord hath forbidden, in his commandments to be done, and so hath trespassed, when his sin which he hath sinned is come to his knowledge, he shall bring for his offering a she-goat without blemish for his sin which he hath sinned, and lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay it in the place of burnt offerings. And the priest shall take of the blood with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the burnt of fairing altar, and pour all the blood upon the bottom of the altar, and shall take away all his fat as the fat of the peace offerings is taken away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savour unto the Lord, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. If he bring a sheep and offer it for a sin offering, he shall bring a ewe without blemish, and lay his hand upon the head of the sin of V. Other lamb. V. Other female. Fairing and slay it in the place where the burnt offerings are slain. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the burnt offering altar, and shall pour all the blood thereof unto the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat of the sheep of the peace offerings was taken away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for the Lord's sacrifice, and the priest shall make an atonement for his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. When a soul hath sinned and heard the voice of cursing and is a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he have not uttered it, he shall bear his sin. Either when a man toucheth any unclean thing, whether it be the carrion of an unclean beast or of unclean cattle or unclean worm and is not ware of it, he is also unclean and hath offended. Either when he toucheth any uncleanness of man, whatsoever uncleanness it be that a man is defiled withal, and is not ware of it, and afterward cometh to the knowledge of it, he is a trespasser. Either when a soul sweareth, so that he pronounceth with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be that a man pronounceth with an oath, and the thing be out of his mind and afterward cometh to the knowledge of it, then he hath offended in one of these. Then when he hath sinned in one of these things, he shall confess that wherein that he hath sinned, and shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin which he hath sinned. A female from the flock, whether it be an ewe or a she-goat, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sin. But if he be not able to bring a sheep, then let him bring for his trespass which he hath sinned, two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the Lord, one for a sin offering and another for a burnt offering and he shall bring them unto the priest, which shall offer the sin offering first, and wring the neck asunder of it, but pluck it not clean off. And let him sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, and let the rest of the blood bleed upon the bottom of the altar, and then it is a sin offering. And let him offer the second for a burnt offering, as the manner is. And so shall the priest make an atonement for him for the sin which he hath sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. And yet if the other, Lamb, he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then let him bring his offering for his sin, the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering, but put none oil thereto, neither put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. And let him bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it and burn it upon the altar for a remembrance to be a sacrifice for the Lord. That is a sin offering. And let the priest make an atonement for him for his sin, whatsoever of these he hath sinned and it shall be forgiven, and the remnant shall be the priests, as it is in the meat offering. And the Lord communed with Moses, saying, When a soul trespasseth and sinneth thorough ignorance in any of the holy things of the Lord, he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock valued at two sickles after the holy sickle, for a trespass offering. And he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing, and put the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto the priest and the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. When a soul sinneth and committeth any of these things which are forbid, den to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, he hath yet offended and is in sin, and shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock that is esteemed to be worth a sin offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him for the ignorance which he did, and was not ware, and it shall be forgiven him. This is a trespass offering, for he trespassed against the Lord. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, When a soul sin, neth and trespasseth against the Lord, and denied unto his neighbor that which was taken him to keep, or that was put under his hand, or that which he hath violently taken away, or that which he hath deceived his neighbor of with subtlety, or hath found that which was lost and denieth it, 
and sweareth falsely in whatsoever thing it be that a man doth and sinneth therein, then when he hath sinned or trespassed, he shall restore again that he took violently away, or the wrong which he did, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or whatsoever it be about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall restore it again in the whole sum, and the other, of the sanctuary, shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it pertaineth, the same day that he offereth for his trespass, and shall bring for his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock, that is esteemed worth a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him in whatsoever thing it be that a man doth and trespasseth therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be upon the hearth of the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall burn therein. And the priest shall put on his linen alb and his linen breeches upon his flesh, and take away the ashes which the fire of the burnt sacrifice in the altar hath made, and put them beside the altar, and then put off his raiment and put on other, and carry the ashes out without the host unto a clean place. The fire that is upon the altar shall burn therein and not go out. And the priest shall put wood on the fire every morning, and put the burnt sacrifice upon it, and he shall burn there on the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever burn upon the altar and never go out. This is the law of the meat of fering. Aaron's sons shall bring it before the Lord unto the altar. And one of them shall take his handful of the flour of the meat offering and of the oil with all the frankincense which is thereon, and shall burn it unto a remembrance upon the altar to be a sweet savour of the memorial of it unto the Lord. And the rest thereof Aaron and his sons shall eat. Unleavened it shall be eaten in the holy place. Even in the court of the tabernacle of witness they shall eat it. Their part which have given them of my sacrifice shall not be bacon with leaven, for it is most holy, as is the sin offering and trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it, and it shall be a duty forever unto your generations of the sacrifices of the Lord. Neither shall any man twitch it but he that is hallowed. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons which he shall offer unto the Lord in the day when they are anointed the tenth part of an ephah of flour, which is a daily meat offering perpetually, half in the morning and half at night. And in the frying pan it shall be made with oil. And when it is fried, thou shalt bring it in as a bacon meat offering minced small, and shalt offer it for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And that priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead shall offer it. And it shall be the Lord's duty for ever, and it shall be burnt altogether." For all the meat offerings of the priests shall be burnt altogether, and shall not be eaten. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, and say, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed also before the Lord, for it is most holy. The priest that offereth it shall eat it in the holy place, even in the court of the tabernacle of witness. No man shall touch the flesh thereof, save he that is hallowed. And if any raiment be sprinkled therewith, it shall be washed in an holy place, and the earthen pot that it is sodden in shall be broken. If it be sodden in brass, then the pot shall be scoured and plunged in the water. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat thereof, for it is most holy, notwithstanding no sin offering that hath his blood brought into the tabernacle of witness to reconcile with all in the holy place shall be eaten, but shall be burnt in the fire. This is the law of the trespass offering which is most holy. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, the trespass of fairing shall be killed also, and his blood shall be sprinkled round about upon the altar, and all the fat thereof shall be of fared, the rump and the fat that covered the inwards, and the two kidneys with the fat that lieth on them and upon the loins, and the call on the liver shall be taken away with the kidneys, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar to be an offering unto the Lord. This is a trespass offering." All the males among the priests shall eat thereof in the holy place, for it is most holy. As the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. One law serveth for both, and it shall be the priest that reconcileth therewith. And the priest that offered a man's burnt offering shall have the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. And all the meat offerings that are bacon in the oven, and all that is dressed upon the gridiron and in the frying pan, shall be the priests that offereth them. And all the meat offerings that are mingled with oil or dry shall pertain unto all the sons of Aaron, and one shall have as much as another. This is the v other rinsed, v other priests, law of the peace offerings which shall be offered unto the Lord.
If he offer to give thanks, he shall bring unto his thank offering sweet cakes mingled with oil and sweet wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. And he shall bring his offering upon cakes made of leavened bread unto the thank offering of his peace offerings. And of them all he shall offer one to be an heave offering unto the Lord. And it shall be the priests that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offerings. And the flesh of the thank offering of his peace offerings shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. And there shall none of it be laid up until the morning. If it be a vow or a free will offering that he bringeth the same day that he offereth it, it shall be eaten, and that which remaineth may be eaten on the morrow. But as much of the offered flesh as remaineth unto the third day shall be burned with fire. For if any of the flesh of the peace offerings be eaten the third day, then shall he that offered it obtain no favor, neither shall it be reckoned unto him, but shall be an abomination, and the soul that eateth of it shall bear the sin thereof. The flesh that twitcheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten but burnt with fire, and all that be clean in their flesh may eat flesh. If any soul eat of the flesh of the peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord and his uncleanness yet upon him, the same soul shall perish from among his people. Moreover, if a soul twitch any unclean thing, whether it be the uncleanness of man or of any unclean beast or any abomination that is unclean, and then eat of the flesh of the peace offerings which pertain unto the Lord, that soul shall perish from his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, Ye shall eat no manner fat of oxen, sheep, or goats. Never the later the fat of the beast that dieth alone, and the fat of that which is torn with wild beasts, may be occupied in all manner uses, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast of which men bring an offering unto the Lord, that soul that eateth it shall perish from his people. Moreover ye shall eat no manner of blood wheresoever ye dwell, whether it be of fowl or of beast. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, the same soul shall perish from his P.O. plea. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, He that offereth his peace offer, king unto the Lord, shall bring his gift unto the Lord of his peace offerings. His own hands shall bring the offering of the Lord. Even the fat upon the breast he shall bring with the breast to wave it a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, and the breast shall be Aaron's and his sons. And the right shoulder they shall give unto the priest to be an heave offering of their peace offerings. And the same that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat among the sons of Aaron shall have the right shoulder unto his part. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have taken of the children of Israel, even of their piece of fairings, and have given it unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons, to be a duty forever of the children of Israel. This is the anointing of Aaron and of the sacrifices of the Lord, in the day when they were offered to be priests unto the Lord, which the Lord commanded to be given them in the day when he anointed them, of the children of Israel, and to be a duty forever among their generations. This is the law of burnt offerings, of meat offerings, of sin offerings, of trespass offerings, of full offerings, of peace offerings, which the Lord commanded Moses in the Mount of Sinai, in the day when he commanded the children of Israel to offer their offerings unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the vestures and the anointing oil, and an ox for a sin offering, and two rams and a basket of sweet bread, and gather all the community together unto the door of the tabernacle of witness. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and the people gathered themselves together unto the door of the tabernacle of witness. And Moses said unto the people, this is the thing which the Lord commanded to do. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons, and washed them with water, and put upon him the alb, and gird him with a girdle, and put upon him the tunicle, and put the ephod thereon, and girded him with the broidered girdle of the ephod, and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastlap thereon, and put in the breastlap light and perfectness. And he put the mitre upon his head, and put upon the mitre, even upon the forefront of it, the golden plate of the holy crown, as the Lord commanded Moses. And Moses took the anointing, oil, and anointed the habitation and all that was therein, and sanctified them, and sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times, and anointed the altar and all his vessels, and the laver with his foot to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head, and anointed him to sanctify him. And he brought Aaron's sons, and put albs upon them, and girded them with girdles, and put bonnets upon their heads, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the sin offering was brought. And Aaron and his sons put their hands upon the head of the ox of the sin offering, 
And when it was slain, Moses took of the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger and purified it, and poured the blood unto the bottom of the altar and sanctified it and reconciled it. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards and the caul that was on the liver and the two kidneys with their fat and burned it upon the altar. But the ox, the hide, his flesh and his dung, he burnt with fire without the host as the Lord commanded Moses. And he brought the ram of the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons put their hands upon the head of the ram, and it was killed. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about, and cut the ram in pieces and burnt the head, the pieces and the fat, and washed the inwards and the legs in water, and burned the ram every whit upon the altar. That was a burnt sacrifice of a sweet savour and an offering unto the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And he brought the other ram that was the full offering, and Aaron and his sons put their hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was slain, Moses took of the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear, and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. Then were Aaron's sons brought, and Moses put of the blood on the tip of the right ear of them, and upon the thumbs of their right hands, and upon the great toes of their right feet, and sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. And he took the fat and the rump and all the fat that was upon the inwards, and the caul of the liver and the two kidneys with their fat and their right shudder. And out of the basket of sweet bread that was before the Lord, he took one sweet cake of oiled bread and one wafer, and put them on the fat and upon the right shoulder, and put all together upon Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands, and waved it a wave offering before the Lord. And then Moses took them from of their hands again and burnt them upon the altar, even upon the burnt offering. These are the full offerings of a sweet savour and a sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses took the breast and waved it a wave offering before the Lord of the ram of the full offerings. And it was Moses' part as the Lord commanded Moses. And Moses took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar, and sprinkled it upon Aaron and upon his vestments and upon his sons and on their vestments with him, and sanctified Aaron and his vesturas and his sons and his sons' vestures also. Then Moses said unto Aaron and his sons, Boil the flesh in the door of the tabernacle of witness, and there eat it with the bread that is in the basket of full offerings, as the Lord commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it, and that which remaineth of the flesh and of the bread burn with fire. And see that ye depart not from the door of the tabernacle of witness seven days long, until the days of your full offerings be at an end. For seven days must your hands be filled as they were this day. Even so the Lord hath commanded to do, to reconcile you with all. See therefore that ye abide in the door of the tabernacle of witness day and night seven days long, and keep the watch of the Lord that ye die not. For so am commanded. And Aaron and his sons did all things which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. And the eighth day Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and said unto Aaron, Take a calf for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering, both without blemish, and bring them before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel he spake, saying, Take ye any goat for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both two of a year old, and without blemish for a burnt sacrifice, and an ox and a ram for peace of fairings to offer before the Lord, and a meat offering mingled with oil. For today the Lord will appear unto you. And they brought that which Moses commanded unto the tabernacle of witness. And all the people came and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and then the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar, and offer thy sin offering, and make an atonement for thee and for the people, and then offer the offering of the people, and reconcile them also, as the Lord commanded Moses. And Aaron went unto the altar, and slew the calf that was his sin offering. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him, and he dipped his finger in the blood, and put it upon the horns of the altar, and poured the blood unto the bottom of the altar and the fat and the two kidneys with the call of the liver of the sin offering, he burnt upon the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. But the flesh and the hide he burnt with fire without the host. Afterward he slew the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons brought the blood unto him, and he sprinkled it round about upon the altar. And they brought the burnt offering unto him in pieces and the head also, and he burnt it upon the altar, and did wash the inwards and the legs, and burnt them also upon the burnt offering in the altar. And then he brought the people's offering, and took the goat that was the people's sin offering, and slew it, and offered it for a sin offering, as he did the first. And then brought the burnt offering, and have feared it as the manner was, 
and brought the meat offering and filled his hand thereof, and burnt it upon the altar besides the burnt sacrifice in the morning. Then he slew the ox and the ram that were the people's peace offerings, and Aaron's sons brought the blood unto him, and he sprinkled it upon the altar round about and took the fat of the ox and of the ram, the rump and the fat that covereth the inwards and the kidneys and the caul of the liver, and put them upon the breasts and burnt it upon the altar. But the breasts and the right should dares Aaron waved before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And Aaron lift up his hand over the people and blessed them, and came down from offering of sin offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings. Then Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of witness and came out again and blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the P.O. play. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar, the burnt offering and the fat. And all the people saw it and shouted and fell on their faces. And Nadab and Abihu the sons of Aaron took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put sense upon, and brought strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went a fire out from the Lord, and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, Will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Misael and Elisaphan the sons of Uriel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Go to and carry your brethren from the holy place out of the host. And they went to them and carried them in their albs out of the host, as Moses bade. And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eleazar and Ithamar his eldest sons, Uncover not your head, neither rent your clothes, lest ye die and wrath come upon all the people. Let your brethren the whole house of Israel be weep the burning which the Lord hath burnt. But go ye not out from the door of the tabernacle of witness, lest ye die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did as Moses bade. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Drink no wine nor strong drink, neither thou nor thy sons with thee. When ye go into the tabernacle of witness, lest ye die, and let it be a law for ever unto your children after you, that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Israel all the ordinances which the Lord hath commanded them by the hands of Moses. And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eleazar and Ithamar his sons that were left, Take the meat of fearing that remaineth of the sacrifices of the Lord, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. Eat it therefore in the holy place, because it is thy duty and thy son's duty of the sacrifice of the Lord, for so am commanded. And the wave breast and heave shoulder eat in a clean place, both thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee. For it is thy duty and thy son's duty with thee of the peace offerings of the children of Israel. For the heave shoulder and the wave breast which they bring with the sacrifices of the fat, to wave it before the Lord shall be thine and thy sons with thee, and be a law forever, as the Lord hath commanded. And Moses sought for the goat that was the sin offering, and see it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin of faring in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And forasmuch as it is given you to bear the sin of the people, and make agreement for them before the Lord. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place, therefore should ye have eaten it in the holy place as commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and it is chanced me after this manner. If should eat of the sin offering today, would the Lord be content with all? And when Moses heard that, he was content. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever hath hoof, and divideth it into two claws, and cheweth cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless these shall ye not eat of them that chew cud and have hooves. The camel for ye cheweth cud, but he divideth not the hoof into two claws, Therefore he shall be unclean unto you. And the coney, for he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof into two claws, therefore he is unclean to you. And the hare, for he likewise cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof into two claws, he is therefore unclean to you. And the swine, for though he divide the hoof into two claws, yet he cheweth not the cud, and therefore is unclean to you. Of their flesh see that ye eat not, and their carcasses see that ye twitch not, for they are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, seas and rivers, that shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and rivers of all that move and live in the waters, shall ye abhor. 
see that ye eat not of their flesh, and also that ye abhor their carcasses. For all that have no fins nor scales in the waters shall be abomination unto you. These are the fowls which ye shall abhor, and which shall not be eaten, for they are an abomination. The eagle, the goshawk, the cormorant, the kite, the vulture, and all his kind, and all kind of ravens, the ostrich, the night crow, the cuckoo, the sparrowhawk, and all the kind. The little owl, the stork, the great owl, the bat, the pelican, the pie, the heron, the jay with the kind, the lapwing, and the swallow. And all fowls that creep and go upon all fours shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of all the fowls that move and go upon four feet, even those that have no knees above upon their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the arb and all his kind, the Siliam with all his kind, the hargol and all the kind, and the hagab and all his kind. All other fowls that move and have four feet shall be abomination unto you. In such ye shall be unclean, whosoever touch the carcass of them shall be unclean unto the even. And whosoever beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and shall be unclean until even. Among all manner beasts, they that have hooves and divide them not into two claws, or that chew not the cud, shall be unclean unto you, and all that twitcheth them shall be unclean. And all that goeth upon his hands among all manner beasts that go on all fours are unclean unto you, and as many as twitch their carcasses shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even, for such are unclean unto you. And these are also unclean to you among the things that creep upon the earth the weasel, the mouse, the toad, and all his kind, the hedgehog, stelio, the lizard, the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that move, and all that twitch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the evening. And whatsoever any of the dead carcasses of them fall upon shall be unclean. Whatsoever vessel of wood it be, or raiment, or skin, or bag, or whatsoever thing it be that any work is wrought with all. And they shall be plunged in the water and be unclean until the even, and then they shall be clean again. All manner of earthen vessel wherein to any of them falleth is unclean with all that therein is, and ye shall break it. All manner meat that is eaten, if any such water come upon it, it shall be unclean. And all manner drink that is drunk in all manner such vessels shall be unclean. And whether it be oven or kettle, it shall be broken. For they are unclean and shall be unclean unto you. Never the later yet the fountains and wells and ponds of water shall be clean still. But whosoever twitcheth their carcasses shall be unclean. If the dead carcass of any such fall upon any seed used to sow, it shall yet be clean still. But, and if any water be poured upon the seed, and afterward the dead carcass of them fall thereon, then it shall be unclean unto you. If any beast of which ye eat die, he that twitcheth the dead carcass shall be unclean until the evening. And he that eateth of any such dead carcass shall wash his clothes and remain unclean until the evening. And he, also that beareth the carcass of it, shall wash his clothes and be unclean until even. All that crawleth upon the earth is an abomination, and shall not be eaten. And whatsoever goeth upon the breast, and whatsoever goeth upon four or more feet among all that crawleth upon the earth, of that see ye eat not, for they are abominable. Make not your souls abominable. Make not your souls abominable with nothing that creepeth, neither make your souls unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For am the Lord your God, be sanctified therefore, that ye may be holy, for am holy." and defile not your souls with any manner thing that creepeth upon the earth. For am the Lord that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Be holy therefore, for am holy. This is the law of beast and fowl, and of all manner thing that liveth and moveth in the water, and of all things that creep upon the earth, that ye may put difference between unclean and clean, and between the beasts that are eaten and the beasts that are not eaten. And the Lord spake unto Moses, and said, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, when a woman hath conceived and hath borne a man-child, she shall be unclean seven days, even in like manner as when she is put apart in time of her natural disease. And in the eighth day the flesh of the child's foreskin shall be cut away, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying thirty-three days. She shall twitch no hallowed thing nor come into the sanctuary until the time of her purifying be out. If she bear a maid-child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as when she hath her natural disease and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying sixty-six days. And when the days of her purifying are out, whether it be a son or a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of one year old for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offer. Ing unto the door of the tabernacle of witness unto the priest, which shall offer them before the Lord, and make an atonement for her, 
and so she shall be purged of her issue of blood. This is the law of her that hath borne a child, whether it be male or female. But and if she be not able to bring a sheep, then let her bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for the sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When there appeareth a rising in any man's flesh either a scab or a glistering white, as though the plague of leprosy were in the skin of his flesh, then let him be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priests, and let the priest look on the sore that is in the skin of his flesh. If the hair in the sore be turned unto white, and the sore also seem to be lower than the skin of his flesh, then it is surely a leprosy. And let the priest look on him and make him unclean. If there be but a white pleck in the skin of his flesh, and seem not to be lower than the other skin, nor the hair thereof is turned unto white, then let the priest shut him up seven days, and let the priest look upon him the seventh day. If the sore seem to him to abide still and to go no further in the skin, then let the priest shut him up yet seven days more, and let the priest look on him again the seventh day. Then if the sore be waxed blackish and is not grown abroad in the skin, let the priest make him clean, for it is but a scurf, and let him wash his clothes, and then he is clean. But and if the scab grow in the skin after that, he is seen of the priest again. If the priest see that the scab be grown abroad in the skin, let him make him unclean, for it is surely a leprosy. If the plague of leprosy be in a man, let him be brought unto the priest, and let the priest see him. If the rising appear white in the skin, and have also made the hair white, and there be raw flesh in the sore also, then it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh. And the priest shall make him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. If a leprosy break out in the skin, and cover all the skin from the head to the foot over all wheresoever the priest looketh, then let the priest look upon him. If the leprosy have covered all his flesh, let him make the disease clean. For inasmuch as he is altogether white, he is therefore clean. But and if there be raw flesh on him when he is seen, then he shall be unclean. Therefore when the priest seeth the raw flesh, let him make him unclean. For inasmuch as his flesh is raw, he is unclean, and it is surely a true leprosy. But and if the raw flesh depart again and change unto white, then let him come to the priest, and let the priest see him. If the sore be changed unto white, let the priest make the five. Other, judge. V. Other, judge. Disease clean, and then he is clean. When there is a beal in the skin of any man's flesh and is healed, and after in the place of the beal there appear a white rising, either a shining white somewhat reddish, let him be seen of the priest. If when the priest seeth him it appear lower than the other skin, and the hair thereof be changed unto white, let the priest make him unclean, for it is a very leprosy that is broken out in the place of the beal. But and if when the priest looketh on it there be no white hairs therein, neither the scab lower than the other skin, and be somewhat blackish, then the priest shall shut him apart seven days. If it spread abroad in the mean season, then let the priest make him unclean, for it is a leprosy. But and if the glistering white abide still in one place and go no further, then it is but the print of the beal, and the priest shall make him clean. When the skin of any man's flesh is burnt with fire that it be raw, and there appear in the burning a glistering white that is somewhat reddish or altogether white, let the priest look upon it. If the hair in that brightness be changed to white and it also appear lower than the other skin, then it is a leprosy that is broken out in the place of the burning and the priest shall make him unclean, for it is a leprosy. But and if, when the priest looketh on it, he see that there is no white hair in the brightness, and that it is no lower than the other skin, and that it is also blackish, then let the priest shut him up seven days. And if, when the priest looketh on him the seventh day, it be grown abroad in the skin, let him make him unclean, for it is a leprosy. But and if that brightness abide still in one place and go no further in the skin and be blackish, then it is but a rising in the place of the burning, and the priest shall make him clean, for it is but the print of the burning only. When either man or woman hath a breaking out upon the head or the beard, let the priest see it. And if it appear lower than the other skin, and there be therein golden hairs and thin, let the priest make him unclean, for it is a breaking out of leprosy upon the head or beard. If, when the priest looketh on the breaking out, he see that it is no lower than the other skin, and that there are black hairs therein, let him shut him up seven days, and let the priest look on the disease the V, other, judge, 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 V, 
other judge. Seventh day, and if the breaking out be gone no further, neither be any golden hairs therein. Neither the scab be lower than the other skin, then let him be shaven, but let him not shave the scab, and let the priest shut him up seven days more. And let the priest look on the breaking out the seventh day again. If the breaking out be gone no further in the skin, nor more lower than the other skin, then let the priest make him clean, and let him wash his clothes, and then he is clean. If the breaking out grow in the skin after that he is once mad clean, let the priest see him. If it be grown abroad indeed in the skin, let the priest seek no further for any golden hairs, for he is unclean. But and if he see that the scab stand still, and that there is black hair grown up therein, then the scab is healed, and he is clean, and the priest shall make him clean. If there be found in the skin of the flesh of man or woman a glistering white, let the priest see it. If there appear in their flesh a glistering white somewhat blackish, then it is but freckles grown up in the skin, and he is clean. If a man's hair fall off his head, then he is head bald and clean. If his hair fall before in his forehead, then he is forehead bald and clean. If there be in the bald head or bald forehead a reddish white scab, then there is leprosy sprung up in his bald head or bald forehead. And let the priest see it. And if the rising of the sore be reddish white in his bald head or forehead after the manner of a leprosy in the skin of the flesh, then he is a leper and unclean and the priest shall make him unclean, for the plague of his head. And the leper in whom the plague is shall have his clothes rent, and his head bare, and his mouth muffled, and shall be called unclean. And as long as the disease lasteth upon him he shall be unclean, for he is unclean, and shall therefore dwell alone, and even without the host shall his habitation be. When the plague of leprosy is in a cloth, whether it be linen or woolen, yea, and whether it be in the warp or woof of the linen or of the woolen, either in a skin or anything made of skin, if the disease be pale or somewhat reddish in the cloth or skin, whether it be in the warp or the woof or anything that is made of skin, then it is a very leprosy, and must be showed unto the priest. And when the priest seeth the plague, let him shut it up seven days, and let him look on the plague the seventh day. V. Other. Judge. V. Other. Judged. V. Other. Judge. V. Other. Judge. If it be increased in the cloth, whether it be in the warp or woof or in a skin or in anything that is made of skin, then the plague is a fretting leprosy, and it is unclean, and that cloth shall be burnt either warp or woof, whether it be woolen or linen or anything that is made of skin wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy and shall be burnt in the fire. If the priest see that the plague hath fretten no further in the cloth, either in the warp or woof or in whatsoever thing of skin it be, then let the priest command then to wash the thing wherein the plague is, and let him shut it up seven days more. And let the priest look on it again after that the plague is washed. If the plague have not changed his fashion, though it be spread no further abroad, it is yet unclean. And see that ye burn it in the fire, for it is fretten inward, whether in part or in altogether. But and if the priest see that it is somewhat blackish after that it is washed, let him rent it out of the cloth, or out of the skin, or out of the warp or woof. But and if it appear any more in the cloth, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything made of skin, then it is a waxing plague, and see that ye burn that with fire wherein the plague is. Moreover the cloth either warp or woof or whatsoever thing of skin it be which thou hast washed and the plague be departed from it, shall be washed once again, and then it is clean. This is the law of the plague of leprosy in a cloth whether it be woolen or linen, either whether it be in the warp or woof or in anything made of skins to make it clean or unclean. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the law of a leper when he shall be cleansed. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go out without the host and look upon him. If the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command that there be brought for him that shall be cleansed, two living birds that are clean, and cypress wood, and a piece of purple cloth and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed over an earthen vessel of running water. And the priest shall take the living bird and the cypress wood and the purple and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water and sprinkle it upon him that must be cleansed of his leprosy seven times and cleanse him and v. Other. Judge. V. Other. Cedar. V. Other. In. V. Other. Cedar. Shall let the living bird go free into the fields. And he that is cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair, and wash himself in water and then he is clean. And after that he shall come into the host, but shall tarry without his tent seven days. 
When the seventh day is come, he shall shave off all his hair both upon his head and his beard and on his brows, and even all the hair that is on him shall be shaven off, and he shall wash his clothes and his flesh in water, and then he shall be clean. And when the eighth day is come, let him take two lambs without blemish, and a ewe lamb of a year old without blemish, and three tenth deals of fine flour for a meat of fairing mingled with oil and a log of oil. Then let the priest that maketh him clean bring the man that is made clean with those things before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of witness. And let the priest take one of the lambs and offer him for a trespass offering and the log of oil, and wave them before the Lord. And then let him slay the lamb in the place where the sin offering and the burnt offering are slain, even in the holy place. For as the sin offering is, even so is the trespass, suffering the priests, for it is most holy. Then let the priest take of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. Then let the priest take of the log of oil, and pour it into the palm of his left hand, and dip his right finger in the oil that is in the palm of his left hand, and let him sprinkle it with his finger seven times before the Lord. And of the rest of the oil that is in his hand, shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, even upon the blood of the trespass offering, and the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him that is cleansed, and so shall be priest make an atonement for him before the Lord. Then let the priest offer the sin offering and make an atonement for him that is cleansed for his uncleanness. And then let the burnt offering be slain. And let the priest put both the burnt offering and the meat offering upon the altar, and make an atonement for him, and then he shall be clean. If he be poor and cannot get so much, then let him bring one lamb for a trespass offering to wave it, and to make an atonement for him, and a tenth deal of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, and a log of oil and two turtle doves or two young pigeons which he is able to get, and let the one be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering. And let him bring them the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of witness before the Lord. And let the priest take the lamb that is the trespass offering and the log of oil, and wave them before the Lord. And when the lamb of the trespass offering is killed, the priest shall take of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of his right ear that is cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour of the oil into his right hand, and shall sprinkle with his finger of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand, upon the tip of the right ear of him that is cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, even in the place where the blood of the trespass offering was put. And the rest of the oil that is in his hand, he shall pour upon the head of him that is cleansed, to make an atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer one of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons, such as he can get, the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering upon the altar. And so shall the priest make an atonement for him that is cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of him that hath the plague of leprosy whose hand is not able to get that which pertaineth to his cleansing. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When ye be come unto the land of Canaan which give you to possess, if put the plague of leprosy in any house of the land of your possession, let him that owneth the house go and tell the priest, saying, Me think that there is as it were a leprosy in the house, and the priest shall command them to rid all things out of the house before the priest go in to see the plague, that he make not all that is in the house unclean and then the priest shall go in and see the house. If the priest see that the plague is in the walls of the house, and that there be hollow streaks pale or red which seem to be lower than the other parts of the wall, then let the priest go out at the house doors and shut up the house for seven days. And let the priest come again the seventh day and see it. If the plague be increased in the walls of the house, let the priest command them to take away the stones in which the plague is, and let them cast them in a foul place without the city and scrape the house within round about, and pour out the dust without the city in a foul place, and let them take other stones, and put them in the places of those stones, and other mortar, and plaster the house with all. If now the plague come again and break out in the house, after that they have taken away the stones and scraped the house, and after that the house is plastered anew, let the priest come and see it. And if then he perceive that the plague hath eaten further in the house, then it is a fretting leprosy that is in the house, and it is unclean. Then they shall break down the house, 
both stones, timber, and all the mortar of the house, and carry it out of the city unto a foul place. Moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that it is shut up, shall be unclean until night. And he that sleepeth in the house shall wash his clothes, and he also that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. But and if the priest come and see that the plague hath spread no further in the house after that it is new plastered, then let him make it clean for the plague is healed, and let him take to cleanse the house withal, two birds, cypress wood and purple cloth and hyssop, and let him kill one of the birds over an earthen vase cell of running water, and take the cypress wood, the hyssop, the purple and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water, and sprinkle upon the house seven times, and cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water, and with the living bird, and with the cypress wood, and the hyssop, and the purple cloth. And he shall let the living bird flee out of the town into the wild fields, and so make an atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law of all manner plague of leprosy and breaking out, and of the leprosy of cloth and house, and of rising scabs and glistering white, to teach when a thing is unclean or clean. This is the law of leprosy. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Every man that hath a running issue in his flesh is unclean by the reason of his issue, and hereby shall it be known when he is unclean, if v other in, v other with, v other cedar, his flesh run, or if his flesh congeal by the reason of his issue, then he is unclean. Every couch whereon he lieth, and everything whereon he sitteth, shall be unclean. He that twitcheth his couch shall wash his clothes and bathe himself with waiter, and be unclean until the even. He that sitteth on that whereon he sat shall wash his clothes and bathe himself with water, and be unclean until the evening. And he that twitcheth his flesh shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean unto the evening. If any such spit upon him that is clean, he must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until even and whatsoever saddle that he rideth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever twitcheth any thing that was under him shall be unclean unto the evening. And he that beareth any such things shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean unto the even. And whosoever he twitcheth, if he have not first washed his hands in water, must wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean unto the evening. And if he twitch a vessel of earth it shall be broken, and all vessels of wood shall be rinsed in the water. When he that hath an issue is cleansed of his is sue, let him number seven days after he is clean, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and then he is clean. And the eighth day let him take two turtle doves or two young pigeons, and come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of witness, and give them unto the priest. And the priest shall offer them, the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and make an atonement for him before the Lord as concerning his issue. If any man's seed depart from him in his sleep, he shall wash his flesh in water and be unclean until evening. And all the clothes or furs whereon such seed chanceth shall be washed with water and be unclean unto the evening. And if a woman lie with such a one, they shall wash themselves with water and be unclean until even. When a woman's natural course of blood runneth, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever twitcheth her shall be unclean unto the evening. And all that she lieth upon as long as she is put apart shall be unclean. And whosoever twitcheth her couch shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself with water, and be unclean unto the evening. And whosoever twitcheth vive, other, or sitteth, anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes, and wash himself also in water, and be unclean unto the even. So that whether he twitch her couch, or anything whereon she hath sit, ten he shall be unclean unto the evening. And if a man lie with her in the meantime, he shall be put apart as well as she, and shall be unclean seven days, and all his couch wherein he sleepeth shall be unclean. When a woman's blood runneth long time, whether out of the time of her natural course, as long as her uncleanness runneth she shall be unclean af, to the manner as when she is put apart. All her couches whereon she lieth, as long as her issue lasteth, shall be unto her as her couch when she is put apart. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as is her uncleanness when she is put apart. And whosoever twitcheth them shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto evening. And when she is cleansed of her is sue, let her count her seven days after that she is clean. And the eighth day let her take two turtles or two young pigeons, and bring them unto the priest unto the door of the tabernacle of witness. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And so make an atonement for her before the Lord, as concerning her unclean issue. 
Make the children of Israel to keep themselves from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness, when they have defiled my habitation that is among them. This is the law of him that hath a running sore, and of him whose seed runneth from him in his sleep and is defiled therewith, and of her that hath an issue of blood as long as she is put apart, and of whosoever hath a running sore, whether it be man or woman, and of him that sleepeth with her that is unclean. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they had offered before the Lord and died. And he said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother that he go not at all times into the holy place, that is within the veil that hangeth before the mercy seat which is upon the ark, that he die not, for will appear in a cloud upon the mercy seat. But of this manner shall Aaron go in into the holy place, with a young ox for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. And he shall put the holy linen alb upon him, and shall v. other. But if v. other, be clean, v. other, bullock, have a linen breech upon his flesh, and shall gird him with a linen girdle, and put the linen mitre upon his head, for they are holy raiments. And he shall wash his flesh with water, and put them on. And he shall take of the multitude of the children of Israel two goats for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer the ox for his sin offering, and make an atonement for him and for his house. And he shall take the two goats, and present them before the Lord in the door of the tabernacle of witness. And Aaron cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and another for a scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to scape, he shall set alive before the Lord to reconcile with, and to let him go free into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the ox of his sin offering, and reconcile for himself and for his household, and kill him. And then he shall take a censer full of burning coals out of the altar that is before the Lord, and his handful of sweet scents beaten small, and bring them within the veil, and put the scents upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the scents may cover the mercy seat that is upon the witness, that he die not. And he shall take of the blood of the ox, and sprinkle it with his finger before the mercy seat eastward even seven times. Then shall he kill the goat that is the people's sin offering, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with his blood as he did with the blood of the ox, and let him sprinkle it toward the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat, and reconcile the holy place from the uncleanness of the children of Israel, and from their trespasses and all their sins. And so let him do also unto the tabernacle of witness that dwelleth with them, even among their uncleannesses and there shall be nobody in the tabernacle of witness when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place, until he come out again. And he shall make an atonement for himself and for his household, and for all the multitude of Israel. Then he shall go out unto the altar that standeth before the Lord, and reconcile it, and shall take of the blood of the ox and of the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about, and sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times, and cleanse it, and hallow it from the uncleannesses of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of wreck, on siling the holy place and the tabernacle of witness and the altar, let him bring the live goat, and let Aaron put both his hands upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the misdeeds of the children of Israel, and all their trespasses and all their sins, and let him put them upon the head of the goat, and send him away by the hands of one that is acquainted in the wilderness." and the goat shall bear upon him all their misdeeds unto the wilderness, and he shall let the goat go free in the wilderness. And let Aaron go into the tabernacle of witness, and put off the line clothes which he put on when he went in into the holy place, and leave them there. And let him wash his flesh with water in the holy place, and put on his own raiment, and then come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, and make an atonement for him. Self and for the people, and the fat of the sin offering let him burn upon the altar. And let him that carried forth the scapegoat wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and then come into the host again. And the ox of the sin offering and the goat of the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place, let one carry out without the host and burn with fire, both their skins, their flesh, and their dung. And let him that burneth them wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and then come into the host again and it shall be an ordinance forever unto you. And even in the tenth day of the seventh month ye shall humble your souls, and shall do no work at all, whether it be one of yourselves or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For that day shall an atonement be made for you to cleanse you from all your sins before the Lord, and ye shall be clean. 
it shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall humble your souls, and it shall be an ordinance for ever. And the priest that is anointed, and whose hand was filled to minister in his father's stead, shall make the atonement, and shall put on the holy linen vestments, and reconcile the holy sanctuary and the tabernacle of witness and the altar, and shall make an atonement also for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. And this shall be an everlasting ordinance unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And it was done even as the Lord commanded Moses. Vive, other, this, v, other, clothes and holy. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord charged, saying, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox, lamb, or goat in the host, or out of the host, and bringeth them not unto the door of the tabernacle of witness, to offer an offering unto the Lord before the dwelling place of the Lord, blood shall be imputed unto that man, as though he had shed blood, and that man shall perish from among his people. Wherefore let the children of Israel bring their offerings they offer in the wide field unto the Lord, even unto the door of the tabernacle of witness, and unto the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord in the door of the tabernacle of witness, and burn the fat to be a sweet savour unto the Lord. And let them no more offer their offerings unto devils after whom they go and whoring. And this shall be an ordinance for ever unto you thorough out your generations. And thou shalt say unto them, Whatsoever man it be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that offereth a burnt offering or any other offering, and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of witness to offer unto the Lord, that fellow shall perish from among his people. And whatsoever man it be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, will set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will destroy him from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and have given it unto you upon the altar, to make an atonement for your souls. For blood shall make an atonement for the soul." And therefore said unto the children of Israel, See that no soul of you eat blood, nor yet any stranger that sojourneth among you. Whatsoever man it be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall pour out the blood and cover it with earth. For the life of all flesh is in the blood, therefore said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is in his blood, and whosoever therefore eateth it shall perish. And whatsoever soul it be that eateth that which died alone, or that which was torn with wild beasts, whether it be one of yourselves or a stranger, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and shall be unclean unto the even, and then is he clean. But and if he wash them not, nor wash his flesh, he shall bear his sin. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Am the Lord your God. Wherefore after the doings of the land of Egypt wherein ye dwelt, see that ye do not neither after the doings of the land of Canaan, where they will bring you, neither walk ye in their ordinances, but do after my judgments, and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. For am the Lord your God. Keep therefore mine ordinances and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live thereby. For am the Lord. See that ye go to none of your nighest kindred, for to uncover their secrets. For am the Lord. The secrets of thy father and thy mother, see thou unhell not. She is thy mother." Therefore shalt thou not discover her secrets. The secrets of thy father's wife shalt thou not discover, for they are thy father's secrets. Thou shalt not discover the privity of thy sister, the daughter of thy father or of thy mother, whether she be born at home or without. Thou shalt not discover the secrets of thy son's daughter or thy daughter's daughter, for that is thine own privity. Thou shalt not discover the secrets of thy father's wife's daughter, which she bare to thy father, for she is thy sister. Thou shalt therefore not discover her secrets. Thou shalt not uncover the secrets of thy father's sister, for she is thy father's next kin. Thou shalt not discover the secrets of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's next kin. Thou shalt not open the secrets of thy father's brother. That is, thou shalt not go into his wife, for she is thine aunt. Thou shalt not discover the secrets of thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife. Therefore uncover not her secrets." Thou shalt not unhell the secrets of thy brother's wife, for that is thy brother's privity. Thou shalt not discover the privates of the wife and her daughter also. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to un. Cover their secrets, they are her next kin. It were therefore wickedness. Thou shalt not take a wife and her sister thereto, 
to vex her that thou wouldest open her secrets as long as she, the other kinswoman, the other kinswoman, the other uncover, the other privities, liveth. Thou shalt not go unto a woman to open her secrets, as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Thou shalt not lie with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Thou shalt not give of thy seed to offer it unto Moloch, that thou defile not the name of thy God, for am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, for that is abominatian. Thou shalt lie with no manner of beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too, for that is abomination. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for with all these things are these Nartians defiled which cast out before you, and the land is defiled, and will visit the wickedness thereof upon it, and the land shall spew out her inhabitors. Keep ye therefore mine or dinances and judgments, and see that ye commit none of these abominations, neither any of you nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were there before you, and the land is defiled, lest that the land spew you out when ye have defiled it as it spewed out the nations that were there before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, the same souls that commit them shall perish from among their people. Therefore see that ye keep mine ordinances, that ye commit none of these abominable customs which were committed before you, that ye defile not yourselves therewith, for am the Lord your God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the multitude of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Be holy, for the Lord your God am holy. See that ye fear every man his father and his mother, and that ye keep my Sabbaths, for am the Lord your God. Ye shall not turn unto idols, nor make you gods of metal, am the Lord your God. When ye offer your peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer them, that ye may be accepted. And it shall be eaten the same day ye offer it, and on the morrow. But whatsoever is left on the third day shall be burnt in the fire. If it be eaten the third day, it shall be unclean and not accepted. And he that eateth it shall bear his sin, because he hath defiled the hallowed things of the Lord, and that soul shall perish from among his P.O. play. When ye reap down the ripe corn of your land, ye shall ve other, uncover her privity, not reap down the utmost borders of your fields, neither shalt thou gather that which is left behind in thy harvest. Thou shalt not pluck in all thy vineyard clean, neither gather in the grapes that are overscaped, but thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. Am the Lord your God." Ye shall not steal, neither lie, neither deal falsely one with another. Ye shall not swear by my name falsely, that thou defilest not the name of thy God and the Lord. Thou shalt not beguile thy neighbor with cavillations, neither rob him violently, neither shall the workman's labor abide with thee until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, neither put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God. Am the Lord. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not favor the poor, nor honor the mighty, but shalt judge thy neighbor righteously. Thou shalt not go up and down a privy accuser among thy people, neither shalt thou help to shed the blood of thy neighbor. Am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, but shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, that thou bear not sin for his sake. Thou shalt not avenge thyself, nor bear hate in thy mind against the children of thy people, but shalt love thy neighbor even as thyself. Am the Lord. Keep mine ordinances. Let none of thy cattle gender with a contrary kind, neither sow thy field with mingled seed, neither shalt thou put on any garment of linen and woolen. If a man have to do with a woman that is bond and hath been meddled with all of another man which neither is bought nor freedom given her, there shall be a pain upon it. But they shall not die because she was not made free. And he shall bring for his trespass offering unto the Lord, even unto the door of the tabernacle of witness, a ram for a trespass of fairing. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord, for his sin which he hath done, and it shall be forgiven him, as concerning the sin which he hath done. And when ye come to the land, and have planted all manner of trees whereof men eat, ye shall hold them uncircumcised as concerning their fruit. Even three years shall they be uncircumcised unto you, and shall not be eaten of, and the fourth year all the fruit of them shall be holy and acceptable to the Lord. And the fifth year may ye eat of the fruit of them, and gather in the increase of them. Am the Lord your God. Ye shall eat nothing with the blood, ye shall use no witchcraft, nor observe dismal days. Ye shall not round the locks of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the tufts of thy beard. Ye shall not rent your flesh for any soul's sake, nor print any marks upon you, am the Lord. 
Thou shalt not pollute thy daughter, that thou wouldest maintain her to be an whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and wax full of wickedness. See that ye keep my Sabbaths and fear my sanctuary, am the Lord. Turn not to them that work with spirits, neither regard them that observe dismal days, that ye be not defiled by them, for am the Lord your God. Thou shalt rise up before the whorehead, and reverence the face of the old man, and dread thy God, for am the Lord. If a stranger sojourn by thee in your land, see that ye vex him not. But let the stranger that dwelleth with you be as one of yourselves, and love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Am the Lord your God. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, neither in metiard, weight, or measure. But ye shall have true balances, true weights, a true ephah, and a true hin. Am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt, that ye should observe all mine ordinances and judgments, and that ye should keep them. Am the Lord. And the Lord talked with Moses, saying, Tell the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that dwell in Israel, that giveth of his seed unto Moloch, he shall die for it. The people of the land shall stone him with stones, and will set my face upon that fellow, and will destroy him from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch, for to defile my sanctuary, and to pollute mine holy name. And though that the people of the land hide their eyes from that fellow, when he giveth of his seed unto Moloch, so that they kill him not. Yet will put my face upon that man and upon his household, and will destroy him and all that go a-whoring with him, and commit whoredom with Moloch from among their people. If any soul turn unto them that work with spirits or makers of dismal days, and go a-whoring after them, will put my face upon that soul and will destroy him from among his people. Sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy, for am the Lord your God, and see that ye of other generation. Be other, turn him to enchanters or expounders of tokens. Keep mine ordinances and do them, for am the Lord which sanctify you. Whosoever curseth his father or mother shall die for it, his blood on his head because he hath cursed his F.A., there or mother. He that breaketh wedlock with another man's wife shall die for it because he hath broke wedlock with his neighbor's wife, and so shall she likewise. If a man lie with his father's wife and uncover his father's secrets, they shall both die for it, their blood be upon their heads. If a man lie with his daughter-in-law, they shall die both of them. They have wrought abomination their blood upon their heads. If a man lie with the mankind after the manner as with womankind, they have both committed an abomination and shall die for it. Their blood be upon their heads. If a man take a wife and her mother thereto, it is wickedness. Men shall burn with fire both him and them, that there be no wickedness among you. If a man lie with a beast, he shall die, and ye shall slay the beast. If a woman go unto a beast and lie down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman, and the beast also they shall die, and their blood be upon their heads. If a man take his sister, his F.A., their daughter or his mother's daughter, and see her secrets, and she see his secrets also, it is a wicked thing. Therefore let them perish in the sight of their people. He hath seen his sister's secretness, he shall therefore bear his sin. If a man lie with a woman in time of her natural disease, and unheal her secrets, and uncover her fountain, and she also open the fountain of her blood, they shall both perish from among their people. Thou shalt not uncover the secrets of thy mother's sis, to nor of thy father's sisters, for he that doth so uncovereth his next kin, and they shall bear their misdoing. If a man lie with his uncle's wife, he hath uncovered his uncle's secrets. They shall bear their sin and shall die childless. If a man take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's secrets. They shall be childless therefore. See that ye keep therefore all mine ordinances and all my judgments, and that ye do them, that the land whither bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. And see that ye walk not in the manners of the nations which cast out before you, for they committed all these things and abhorred them, but have said unto you that ye shall enjoy their land, and that will vive. Other. Uncover. Vive. Other. Open. Give it unto you to possess it, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. Am the Lord your God which have separated you from other nations, that ye should put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and them that are clean. Make not your souls therefore abominable with beasts and fowls, and with all manner thing that creepeth upon the ground, which have separated unto you to hold them unclean. Be holy unto me, for the Lord am holy and have severed you from other nations, that ye should be mine. If there be man or woman that worketh with a spirit or a maker of dismal days, they shall die for it. Men shall stone them with stones, 
and their blood shall be upon them. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, A priest shall defile himself at the death of none of his people, but upon his kin that is nigh unto him, as his mother, father, son, daughter, and brother, and on his sister as long as she is a maid, and dwelleth nigh him, and was never given to man. On her he may defile himself, but he shall not make himself unclean upon a ruler of his people to pollute himself withal. They shall make them no baldness upon their heads, or shave off the locks of their beards, nor make any marks in their flesh. They shall be holy unto their God, and not pollute the name of their God. For the sacrifices of the Lord and the bread of their God they do offer, therefore they must be holy. They shall take no wife that is an whore, or polluted, or put from her husband, for a priest is holy unto his God. Sanctify him therefore, for he offereth up the bread of God. He shall therefore be holy unto thee, for the Lord which sanctify you am holy. If a priest's daughter fall to play the whore, she polluteth her father. Therefore she shall be burnt with fire. He that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and whose hand was filled to put on the vestments, shall not uncover his head, nor rent his clothes, neither shall go to any dead body, nor make himself unclean. No, not on his father or mother, neither shall go out of the sanctuary that he pollute not the holy place of his God, for the crown of the anointing oil of God is upon him. Am the Lord. He shall take a maiden unto his wife, but no widow nor divorced nor polluted whore. Vaf. Other expoundeth tokens. But he shall take a maiden of his own people to wife, that he defile not his seed upon his people. For am the Lord which sanctify him. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say, no man of thy seed in their generations that hath any deformity upon him shall praise for to offer the bread of his God, for none that hath any blemish shall come near, whether he be blind, lame, snout-nosed, or that hath any monstrous member, or broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crook-backed, or pearled, or goggle-eyed, or mangy, or schooled, or hath his stones broken. No man that is deformed of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the sacrifices of the Lord. If he have a deformity he shall not praise to offer the bread of his God notwithstanding he shall eat of the bread of his God, even as well of the most holy as of the holy, but shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh the altar, because he is deformed, that he pollute not my sanctuary, for am the Lord that sanctify them. And Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons, and unto all the children of Israel. And the Lord communed with Moses, saying, Bid Aaron and his sons that they abstain from the hallowed things of the children of Israel which they have hallowed unto me, that they pollute not mine holy name for am the Lord. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generity and after you that goeth unto the hallowed things which the children of Israel shall have hallowed unto the Lord, his uncleanness shall be upon him, and that soul shall perish from out of my sight. Am the Lord. None of the seed of Aaron that is a leper or that hath a running sore shall eat of the whole load things until he be clean. And whosoever twitcheth any unclean soul or man whose seed runneth from him by night, or whosoever twitcheth any worm that is unclean to him, or man that is unclean to him, whatsoever uncleanness he hath. The same soul that hath twitched any such thing shall be unclean until even, and shall not eat of the hallowed things until he have washed his flesh with water. And then when the sun is down he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the hallowed things, for they are his food. Of a beast that dieth alone, or is rent with wild beasts, he shall not eat to defile himself therewith, am the Lord. But let them keep therefore mine ordinance, lest they laid sin upon them and die therein, when they have defiled themselves, for am the Lord which sanctify them. There shall no stranger eat of the hallowed things, neither a guest of the priests or an hired servant. But if the priest buy any fowl with money, he may eat of it, and he also that is born in his house may eat of his bread. If the priest's daughter be married unto a stranger, she may not eat of the hallowed heave offerings. Notwithstanding if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child but is returned unto her father's house again, she shall eat of her father's bread as well as she did in her youth. But there shall no stranger eat thereof. If a man eat of the hallowed things unwittingly, he shall put the fifth part thereunto, and make good unto the priest the hallowed thing. And let the priest see that they defile not the hallowed things of the children of Israel which they have offered unto the Lord, lest they laid themselves with misdoing and trespass in eating their whole load things, for am the Lord which hallow them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and his sons, and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, 
whatsoever he be of the house of Israel or stranger in Israel that will offer his offering, whatsoever vow or free will offering it be which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering to reconcile themselves, it must be a male without blemish of the oxen, sheep, or goats. Let them offer nothing that is deformed, for they shall get no favor therewith. If a man will offer a peace offering unto the Lord and separate a vow or a free will offering of the oxen or the flock, it must be without deformity that it may be accepted. There may be no blemish therein, whether it be blind, broken, wounded, or have a wen, or be mangy or scabbed. See that ye offer no such unto the Lord, nor put an offering of any such upon the altar unto the Lord. An ox or a sheep that hath any member out of proportion, mayst thou offer for a free will offering, but in a vow it shall not be accepted. Thou shalt not offer unto the Lord that which hath his stones bruised, broken, plucked out, or cut away. Neither shalt make any such in your land. Nay, there of a stranger's hand shall ye offer an offering to your God of any such. For they mar all in that they have deformities in them, and therefore cannot be accepted for you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When an ox, a sheep, or a goat is brought forth, it shall be seven days under the dam. And from the eighth day forth it shall be accepted unto a gift in the sacrifice of the Lord. And whether it be ox or sheep, ye shall not kill it and her young, both in one day. When ye will offer a thank offering unto the Lord, ye shall so offer it that ye may be accepted. And the same day it must be eaten up, so that ye leave none of it until the morrow. For am the Lord, keep now my commandments and do them, for am the Lord. And pollute not my holy name that may be hallowed among the children of Israel. For am the Lord which hallow you and brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. For am the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, these are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall call holy feasts. Six days ye shall work, and the seventh is the Sabbath of rest and holy feast, so that ye may do no work therein, for it is the Sabbath of the Lord, wheresoever ye dwell. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim holy in their seasons. The fourteenth day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover, and the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of sweet bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. The first day shall be an holy feast unto you, so that ye may do no laborious work therein. But ye shall offer sacrifices unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day also shall be an holy feast, so that ye may do no labor riotous work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which give unto you, and reap down your harvest, ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. And even the morrow after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer the day when he waveth the sheaf, a lamb without blemish of a year old for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat of fairing thereof, two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil to be a sacrifice unto the Lord of a sweet savour. And the drink offering thereto the fourth deal of an hin of wine. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor frumenty of new corn until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offer, ing unto your God. And this shall be a law forever unto your children after you, wheresoever ye dwell. And ye shall count from the morrow after the Sabbath, even from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering seven weeks complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh week ye shall number fifty days. And then ye shall bring a new meat offering unto the Lord. And ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves made of two tenth deals of fine flour leavened and bacon for first fruits unto the Lord. And ye shall bring with the bread seven lambs without deformity of one year of age, and one young ox and two rams, which shall serve for burnt of fairings unto the Lord, with meat offerings and drink offerings longing to the same, to be a sacrifice of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And ye shall offer an a goat for a sin offering, and two lambs of one year old for peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits before the Lord and with the two lambs, and they shall be holy unto the Lord and be the priests. And ye shall make a proclamation the same day that it be an holy feast unto you, and ye shall do no laborious work therein. And it shall be a law forever thorough out all your habitations unto your children after you. When ye reap down your harvest, thou shalt not make clean riddance of thy field, neither shalt thou make any after gathering of thy harvest, but shalt leave them unto the poor and the stranger. Am the Lord your God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, The first day of the seventh month shall be a rest of remembrance unto you. To blow horns in an holy feast it shall be, and ye shall do no laborious work therein, 
and ye shall offer sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of the self-seventh month is a day of atonement, and shall be on holy feast unto you, and ye shall humble your souls and offer sacrifice unto the Lord. Moreover ye shall do no work the same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that humbleth not himself that day, he shall be destroyed from among his pio plea. And whatsoever soul do any manner work that day, the same will destroy from among his people. See that ye do no manner work therefore, and it shall be a law forever unto your generations after you in all your dwellings. A Sabbath of rest it shall be unto you, and ye shall humble your souls. The ninth day of the month at evening and so forth from evening to evening again, ye shall keep your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say, The fifteenth day of the same seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles seven days unto the Lord. The first day shall be an holy feast, so that ye shall do no laborious work therein. Seven days ye shall offer sacrifice unto the Lord, and the eighth day shall be an holy feast unto you, and ye shall offer sacrifice unto the Lord. It is the end of the feast, and ye shall do no laborious work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim holy feasts, for to of for sacrifice unto the Lord, burnt offerings, meat offerings, and drink offerings every day, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and all your vows, and all your free will offerings which ye shall give unto the Lord. Moreover, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month after that ye have gathered in the fruits of the land, ye shall keep holy day unto the Lord seven days long. The first day shall be a day of rest, and the eighth day shall be a day of rest. And ye shall take you the first day the fruits of goodly trees, and the branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and shall rejoice before the Lord seven days. And ye shall keep it holy day unto the Lord seven days in the year. And it shall be a law for ever unto your children after you, that ye keep that feast in the seventh month. And ye shall dwell in booths seven days. Even all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your children after you may know how that made the children of Israel dwell in booths when brought them out of the land of Egypt. For am the Lord your God. And Moses told all the feasts of the Lord unto the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command thee, children of Israel, that they bring unto thee pure oil olive beaten for lights to pour into the lamps always, without the veil of testimony within the tabernacle of witness. And Aaron shall dress them both evening and morning before the Lord always. And if shall be a law for ever among your children after you the other, witness. And he shall dress the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord perpetually. And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve wastels thereof. Two tenth deals shall every wastel be. And make two rows of them, six on a row upon the pure table before the Lord, and put pure frankincense upon the rows. And it shall be bread of remembrance and an offering to the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall put them in rows before the Lord evermore, given of the children of Israel, that it be an everlasting covenant and they shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat them in the holy place. For they are most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord, and shall be a duty for ever. And the son of an Israelitish wife whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish wife and a man of Israel strove together in the host. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed, and they brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Selamith, the daughter of Debri of the tribe of Dan, and they put him in ward, that Moses should declare unto them what the Lord said thereto. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring him that cursed without the host, and let all that heard him put their hands upon his head, and let all the multitude stone him. And speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall die for it. All the multitude shall stone him to death." And the stranger as well as the Israelite, if he curse the name, shall die for it. He that killeth any man shall die for it, but he that killeth a beast shall pay for it, beast for beast. If a man maim his neighbor as he hath done, so shall it be done to him again, broke for broke, eye for eye, and tooth for tooth. Even as he hath maimed a man, so shall he be maimed again. So now he that killeth a beast shall pay for it, but he that killeth a man shall die for it. Ye shall have one manner of law among you even for the stranger as well as for one of yourselves, for am the Lord your God. And Moses told the children of Israel that they should bring him that had cursed out of the host and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, The other blasphemed. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, 
When ye be come into the land which give you, let the land rest a sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt cut thy vines and gather in thy fruits. But the seventh year shall be a sabbath of rest unto the land. The Lord's sabbath it shall be, and thou shalt neither sow thy field nor cut thy vines. The corn that groweth by itself thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes that grow without thy dressing, but it shall be a sabbath of rest unto the land. Nevertheless the sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, even for thee and thy servant and for thy maid and for thy hired servant and for the stranger that dwelleth with thee, and for thy cattle and for the beasts that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. Then number seven weeks of years, that is seven times seven year, and the space of the seven weeks of years will be unto thee forty-nine year. And then thou shalt make an horn blow, even in the tenth day of the seventh month, which is the day of atonement. And then shall ye make the horn blow, even thorough out all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty thorough out the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a year of horns blowing unto you, and ye shall return, every man unto his possession, and every man unto his kindred again. A year of horns blowing shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow neither reap the corn that groweth by itself, nor gather the grapes that grow without thy labor. For it is a year of horns blowing, and shall be holy unto you. Howbeit yet ye shall eat of the increase of the field. And in this year of horns blowing ye shall return, every man unto his possession again. When thou sellest aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. But according to the number of years after the trumpet year, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of fruit year, he shall sell unto thee. According unto the multitude of years thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years thou shalt minish the price. For the number of fruit he shall sell unto thee. And see that no man oppress his neighbor, but fear thy God. For am the Lord your God. Wherefore do after mine ordinances, and keep my laws, and do them, that ye may dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall give her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill, and dwell therein in safety. If ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year, inasmuch as we shall not sow nor gather in our increase? We'll send my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat of old fruit until the ninth year. And even until her fruits come, ye shall eat of old store. Wherefore the land shall not be sold for ever, because that the land is mine, and ye but strangers and sojourners with me. And ye shall thorough out all the land of your possession. Let the land go home free again. When thy brother is waxed poor, and hath sold away of his possession, if any of his kin come to redeem it, he shall buy out that which his brother sold. And though he have no man to redeem it for him, yet if his hand can get sufficient to buy it out again, then let him count how long it hath been sold and deliver the rest unto him to whom he sold it, and so he shall return unto his possession again. But and if his hand cannot get sufficient to restore it to him again, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that hath bought it, until the horn year, and in the horn year it shall come out, and he shall return unto his possession again. If a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, he may buy it out again any time within a whole year after it is sold, and that shall be the space in which he may redeem it again. But, and if it be not bought out again within the space of a full year, then the house in the walled city shall be established forever unto him that bought it, and to his successors after him, and shall not go out in the trumpet year. But the houses in villages which have no walls round about them shall be counted like unto the fields of the country, and may be bought out again at any season, and shall go out free in the trumpet year. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites and the houses in the cities of their possessions, the Levites may redeem at all seasons. And if a man purchase aught of the Levites, whether it be house or city that they possess, the bargain shall go out in the trumpet year. For the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possessions among the children of Israel. But the fields that lie round about their cities shall not be bought, for they are their v. other jubilee. V. Other of Jubilee, V. Other of Jubilee, V. Other of Jubilee, V. Other of Jubilee. Possessions forever. If thy brother be waxed poor and fallen in decay with thee, receive him as a stranger or a sojourner, and let him live by thee. And thou shalt take none usury of him, nor yet vantage, but shalt fear thy God that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not lend him thy money upon usury, nor lend him of thy food to have advantage by it. For am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt 
to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If thy brother that dwelleth by thee wax poor and sell him, self unto thee thou shalt not let him labor as a bondservant doeth. But as an hired servant and as a sojourner he shall be with thee, and shall serve thee unto the trumpet year, and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own kindred again and unto the possessions of his fathers. For they are my servants which brought out of the land of Egypt, and shall not be sold as bondmen. See therefore that thou reign not over him cruelly, but fear thy God. If thou wilt have bondservants and maid Ennis, thou shalt buy them of the heathen that are round about you, and of the children of the strangers that are sojourners among you, and of their generations that are with you, which they begat in your land. And ye shall possess them, and give them unto your children after you, to possess them for ever, and they shall be your bondmen. But over your brethren the children of Israel ye shall not reign one over another cruelly. When a stranger and a sojourner waxeth rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him waxeth poor, and sell himself unto the stranger that dwelleth by thee, or to any of the stranger's kin, after that he is sold he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may buy him out, whether it be his uncle or his uncle's son, or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his kindred. Either if his hand can get so much he may be loosed, and he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold in unto the trumpet year. And the price of his buying shall be according unto the number of years, and he shall be with him as a hired servant. If there be yet many years behind, according unto them he shall give again for his deliverance of the money that he was sold for. If there remain but few years unto the trumpet year, he shall so count with him, verf, other, of jubilee, and according unto his years give him again for his redemption and shall be with him year by year as an hired servant, and the other shall not reign cruelly over him in thy sight. If he be not bought free in the meantime, then he shall go out in the trumpet year and his children with him. For the children of Israel are my servants which brought out of the land of Egypt. Am the Lord your God. Ye shall make you no idols, nor grave an image, neither rear you up any pillar, neither ye shall set up any image of stone in your land to bow yourselves thereto. For am the Lord your God, Keep my Sabbaths, and fear my sanctuary. For am the Lord. If ye shall walk in mine ordinances, and keep my commandments, and do them, then will send you rain in the right season, and your land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall give their fruit. And the threshing shall reach unto wine harvest, and the wine harvest shall reach unto sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread in plenteousness, and shall dwell in your land peaceably, and will send peace in your land that ye shall sleep, and no man shall make you afraid and will rid evil beasts out of your land, and there shall no sword go thorough out your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you upon the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you upon the sword, and will turn unto you, and increase you, and multiply you, and set up my testament with you. And ye shall eat old store, and cast out the old for plenteousness of the new. Will make my dwelling place among you, and my soul shall not loathe you and will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my P.O. plea. For am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of the Egyptians, that ye should not be their bondmen, and break the boughs of your yokes, and made you go upright. But and if ye will not hearken unto me, nor will do all these my commandments, or if ye shall despise mine ordinances, either if your souls refuse my laws, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but shall break mine appointment, then will do this again unto you will visit you with vexations, swelling and fevers that shall make your eyes dazzle and with sorrows of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies, shall eat it, and will set my face against you, and ye shall fall before your enemies. And they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when no man followeth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then will punish you seven times more for your sins, and will break the pride of your strength. For will make the heaven over you as hard as iron, and your land as hard as brass, and so your labor shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not give her increase, neither the trees of the land shall give their fruits. And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins, will send in wild beasts upon you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle, and make you so few in number that your high ways shall grow unto a wilderness. And if ye will not be learned yet for all this, but shall walk contrary unto me, then will also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Will send a sword upon you, that shall avenge my testament with you. And when ye are fled unto your cities, will send the pestilence among you, 
ye shall be delivered into the hands of your enemies. And when have broken the staff of your bread, the ten wives shall bake your bread in one oven, and men shall deliver you your bread again by weight. Then shall ye eat, and shall not be satisfied. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, but shall walk contrary unto me, then will walk contrary unto you also wrathfully, and will also chastise you seven times for your sins, so that ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters, and will destroy your altars built upon high hills, and overthrow your images, and cast your carcasses upon the bodies of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you, and will make your cities desolate, and bring your sanctuaries unto naught, and will not smell the savours of your sweet odours, and will bring the land unto a wilderness, so that your enemies which dwell therein shall wonder at it, and will straw you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be waste, and your cities desolate. Then the land shall rejoice in her sabbaths, as long as it lieth void and ye in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land keep holy day and rejoice in her sabbaths, and as long as it lieth void it shall rest, for that it could not rest in your sabbaths when ye dwelt therein. And upon them that are left alive of you will send a faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies, so that the sound of a leaf that falleth shall chase them, and they shall flee as though they fled a sword, and shall fall no man following them and they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword even no man following them. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their unrighteousness, even in their enemies' land, and also in the misdeeds of their fathers shall they consume. And they shall confess their misdeeds and the misdeeds of their fathers in their trespasses, which they have trespassed against me and for that also that they have walked contrary unto me. Therefore also will walk contrary unto them, and will bring them into the land of their enemies. And then at the least way their uncircumcised hearts shall be tamed, and then they shall make an atonement for their misdeeds. And will remember my bond with Jacob, and my testament with Isaac, and my testament with Abraham, and will think on the land. For the land shall be left of them, and shall have pleasure in her sabbaths, while she lieth waste without them and they shall make an atonement for their misdeeds, because they despised my laws and their souls refused mine ordinances. And yet for all that when they be in the land of their enemies, will not so cast them away, nor my soul shall not so abhor them, that will utterly destroy them and break mine appointment with them. For am the Lord their God. Will therefore remember unto them the first covenant made when brought them out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen to be their God. For am the Lord. These are the ordinances, judgments, and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man will give a singular vow unto the Lord according to the value of his soul, then shall the male from twenty year unto forty be set at fifty sickles of silver, after the sickle of the sanctuary, and the female at thirty sickles, and from five years to twenty the male shall be set at twenty sickles, and the female at ten sickles. And from a month unto five year the male shall be set at five sickles of silver, and the female at three. And the man that is forty and above shall be valued at fifteen sickles, and the woman at ten. If he be too poor so to be set, then let him come before the priest, and let the priest value him, according as the hand of him that vowed is able to get. If it be of the beasts of which men bring an offering unto the Lord, all that any man giveth of such unto the Lord shall be holy. He may not alter it nor change it, a good for a bad or a bad for good. If he change beast for beast, then both the same beast and it also wherewith it was changed shall be holy. If it be any manner of unclean beast of which men may not offer unto the Lord, let him bring the beast before the priest and let the priest value it. And whether it be good or bad as the priest setteth it, so shall it be. And if he will buy it again, let him give the fifth part more to that it was set at. If any man dedicate his house, it shall be holy unto the Lord, and the priest shall set it, whether it be good or bad, and as the priest hath set it, so it shall be. If he that sanctified it will redeem his house, let him give the fifth part of the money that it was judged at thereto, and it shall be his. If a man hallow a piece of his inherited land unto the Lord, it shall be set according to that it beareth. If it bear an homer of barley, it shall be set at fifty cycles of silver. If he hallow his field immediately from the trumpet year, it shall be worth according as it is esteemed. But and if he hallow his field after the trumpet year, 
the priest shall reckon the price with him according to the years that remain unto the trumpet year, and thereafter it shall be lower set. If he that sanctified the field will redeem it again, let him put the fifth part of the price that it was set at thereunto, and it shall be his. If he will not, it shall be redeemed no more. But when the field goeth out in the trumpet year, it shall be holy unto the Lord, even as a thing dedicated, and it shall be the priest's possession. If a man sanctify unto the Lord a field, which he hath bought and is not of his inheritance, then the priest shall reckon with him what it is worth unto the trumpet year, and he shall give the price that it is set at the same day, and it shall be holy unto the Lord. But in the trumpet year the field shall return. Other Year of Jubilee Unto him of whom he bought it, whose inheritance of land it was, and all settings shall be according to the holy sekel. One sekel maketh twenty geras, but the firstborn of the beasts that pertain unto the Lord may no man sanctify, whether it be ox or sheep, for they are the Lord's already. If it be an unclean beast, then let him redeem it as it is set at, and give the fifth part more thereto. If it be not redeemed, then let it be sold as it is rated. Notwithstanding no dedicated thing that a man dedicateth unto the Lord of all his goods, whether it be man or beast or land of his inheritance, shall be sold or redeemed. For all dedicate things are most holy unto the Lord. No dedicated thing therefore that is dedicate of man may be redeemed, but must needs die. All these tithes of the land, whether it be of the corn of the field or fruit of the trees, shall be holy unto the Lord. If any man will redeem aught of his tithes, let him add the fifth part more thereto. And the tithes of oxen and sheep, and of all that goeth under the herdman's keeping, shall be holy tithes unto the Lord. Men shall not look if it be good or bad, nor shall change it. If any man change it, then both it and that it was changed withal, shall be holy and may not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord gave Moses in charge to give unto the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. T. End of T. Third. O.K. Okay of Moses.